does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hi, and welcome to Divya Watchin, the Sunday Scripture Reflection Series. This episode is a reflection for the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Joining us at the table of God's Word is Rev. Father Tony Lopez. He is the member of the Society of Pilar and a wonderful preacher of the Word of God. Come, let's feast on the Word of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some seduces those who say there is no resurrection came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless, then the second and the third married her. And so, in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised Moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is the God not of the dead but of the living for to him all of them are alive. Dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, every human being is on a life's journey. In this life's journey, people experience within themselves a deep sense of restlessness, loneliness and homelessness. Every human being is in search for a meaning in life, in search for a purpose in life. And from time immemorial, the oft-repeated questions they ask themselves are Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? What awaits me after death? Going down the memory lane of my life, I recall that at the age of 10, I asked my mother, what happens to a person after death? She answered with great simplicity that after death, the soul of the person goes to heaven. This thought kept lingering in my mind until after a long time, one day I heard wailing and weeping in one of the houses in my neighborhood. I inquired, why were they crying? I was told that a young boy had just died. I wasted no time. I ran to see the dead boy. I saw the dead boy in the arms of his mother, who was crying bitterly. However, I was rather curious to see how his soul was going to heaven. To my utter disappointment, I could see nothing. I went back and told my mother, I could not see the soul of the dead boy going to heaven. Again, her simple answer was, you reached late. 
people have different understandings about life after death. A most common understanding is that of Plato, a great Greek philosopher. He says that the spiritual soul escapes from the prison of the body. Plato's dualistic understanding of human body, the body and soul, has proven to be extremely influential among some Christians. Christians who hold on to some version of it say that after death, the soul escapes from the body and lives in the spiritual realm. Another understanding is given by Hinduism. It says that the person after death reincarnates itself to another form of life, depending on the manner it lived its life on earth. And yet another understanding is that you just disappear after death. The dead person just returns to the dust of the earth. The church teaches us that human person is radically one. It does not consider body and soul as two different realities. As Christians, we believe not only in the survival of the soul, but also in the resurrection of the body. In the Apostles' Creed, we profess our faith in the resurrection of the body. About 180 years just before Jesus was born, the book of Maccabees gives us the valuable background to the beginnings of this belief. In today's reading from 2 Maccabees, the mother and her seven sons are willing to go undergo the horrific torture and death. It is because they are filled with enormous confidence that God in his love will restore those who have died to a full and elevated bodily life. We take for our reflection the confidence and courage of the third son who suffered the cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It is from heaven that I receive these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Here, he shows a belief in the resurrection that God will raise him up with a body fully restored. Belief in the resurrection gives the mother and the seven sons meaning to their earthly life and courage to withstand their present suffering. In today's Gospel reading, the Sadducees, who did not believe in the resurrection of the dead, put up a case before Jesus, the purpose of which was to ridicule the idea of resurrection. They narrate that one by one, seven brothers marry a woman because each brother who married the woman died without having a child. At last, the woman also died. So they questioned Jesus, if they all rise from the dead, then in heaven, among the seven brothers, whose wife will she be? Jesus corrects them by saying that life after death is spiritual and not physical. Life after death is an entirely different way of life. There is no more death. And again, Jesus supports his statement of life after death by picking up the incident of Moses and the burning bush, where God said to Moses, 
I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, which meant that he is the God of men who had historically died. If God continues to be their God, even after their death on earth, then even after their death on earth, they are alive. For God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Now in today's second reading, we see St. Paul writing to the Thessalonians, reminds them as they have strange ideas about the second coming of Christ. Paul corrects their notion and prays for them. He prays that through the power of the Holy Spirit, they may remain faithful to the risen Lord and may persevere even in the face of persecution. Thus, they are called to endure in the faith of the risen Lord. In all our three readings, we see that our relationship with God transcends death. Our faith calls us to the realization that we are destined to die. But it is not our ultimate destiny. Death is a doorway to a resurrection to eternal life with a full and elevated body. Belief in eternal life after death gives meaning and purpose to our earthly life. Bill and Gloria have composed and sung a song titled, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. During the late 1960s, while Gloria was expecting her third child, she and her husband were going through a time of fear and torment. They were objects of persecutions. Bill was sick with some infection. Across the nation, the educational system was infiltrated with the God is dead idea. Drug abuse and racial tensions were increasing. Gloria was uneasy that her third child would be born in this kind of a world. She remembers sitting in their living room in agony and fear. Then suddenly, both Bill and Gloria experienced the spirit of the risen Lord. The power of Christ's resurrection was reaffirmed in their lives. And quite unexpectedly, they were filled with a sweet, calming peace. All this gave rise to their song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. The first verse speaks of the belief in Jesus' death, burial and resurrection. The second verse speaks of the life of the new baby and the sense of the assurance that Christ alone can give this little one. That is, an assurance of victorious life, even in the darkness of this world. Because Jesus Christ has risen and lives forever. In all the uncertainties of life, I am called to realize that God holds the future and makes life worth living when I trust in Him. Let us prayerfully listen to the song.
This earth is not my home. I'm just a passerby. Our Lord Jesus has taken victory over death. He is risen. Yes, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. May my faith in my resurrection after death to the life of the risen Lord gain me an assurance and strength to overcome the frightening obstacles of my life and empower me to live my life in Jesus. Amen. Join me next Friday at 6 p.m. to feast on the Word of God.